It's time for Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. Breaking down game-changing plays, momentum-shifting moves, the inside scoop on the team and what's next for the Knolls. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, live from downtown Tallahassee. ABC 27 presents Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. Sponsored by these businesses. Right, here we go. Welcome in, Knolls fans, live from Cushies in College Town. Another edition of Inside Seminole Football with the head coach, Mike Norvell. Coming off a dominant performance against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Happy Halloween, everybody. Nothing scary about FSU's performance. Just a lot of star power across the board from start to finish. And the only nightmare is on Saturday night where the folks heading back to the 404 wearing the Golden Navy coach. Impressive performance. Congratulations on a, on a great win. Moving to 5-3 and three into the final month of the regular season. You talked all about how hungry your team was to get back out and play and go out and grab a win. And, wow, they, they showed it for four quarters on Saturday afternoon. They did. I was really proud of our team. I mean, you all the work, you know, we had, we had talked about uh, just the intensity that they brought to practice during the bye week. You know, that was a time to kind of, you know, be able to refresh our minds, refresh our bodies. It was great to get some guys back. You know, Fabian Lovett, uh, you know, being, to, being able to yeah. get back out on the field made a great impact. Uh, but, you know, what I loved is just the, the, the way that our guys, you know, came into that game. You know, it didn't all go as, as well as we liked, for, especially there early. You had some, mis, some mishaps, uh, you know, there offensively early in the game. But man they did an unbelievable job with their response and you know defensively in the first half I think we held them to, to 24 24 yards on 24 plays yeah. which is remarkable and, you know so many explosive plays and then seeing our offense respond and being able to go out there and you know show the explosiveness that they had and, you know career day for Jordan Travis I think we had over 640 yards of offense yeah. I mean it was you know the playmaker showed up big and uh, you know even though there were some some challenging moments I mean their response and that identity really showed true you talk about your maturity and response is something you've been looking for and you've seen out of your football team throughout the season, but even the improvement and the added uh, growth in maturity, even in this eight-game period, Coach, I think you, you can see it even go back to games one and two uh, to what you saw as you talked about, some adversity, uh, some things that, that from an execution standpoint obviously didn't go the way you wanted them to yet. It just it felt like your guys never wavered one second in that game. Confidence obviously high and maturity felt like at a, at a different level in some ways as well. Well, I mean, this is a battle-tested team. And when you, you look at the, you know, the first eight games of the season, we played some really good teams. I mean, it's been, you know, there's been some challenges with some highs, there's been some lows, but, you know, the, the thing that's never, that's never wavered is these guys, you know, their determination, their heart, I mean, just the, uh, the, the, the willingness to fight through some of those, to some of those ups and downs. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's what's impressive to me. And I, and I told our guys, you know, there after the game, I mean, we were, we were excited we won. And I mean, you, you go and, you know, you, you fight for everything that you have to be able to win that game and to be able to, to go out there and perform at a high level. But, you know, we're still pushing to the standard of what is our absolute mm -hmm. best. And, you know, when guys can, can come out of that game and say, well, you know, Coach, you know, these are the things we need to do to get better. And, you know, then you show up on Sunday and it's about the work. And, and you know, obviously we're here on Rivalry Week. It's yeah. a great, great uh, you know, opportunity for our team. Um, you know, we got to take, you know, take some of the momentum that we get just gained, you know, coming off of Saturday. And now we've got to go get better. And, uh, you know, that's what I love about this team and just the way that they uh, you embrace those challenges. I felt like there was a lot of reflective moments today uh, during your press conference, thinking back to a couple of years ago in year number one, and, and then hearing you talk about how far this football team has come and where, where they are at right now. And, and as you mentioned, we, when you hear guys say, and, and I think Alex Atkins talked about this a little bit as well during his media period today, when you hear the players and, and your guys say, yeah, I, I know exactly what I was supposed to do there. They're seeing it and they're hearing the message. That's got to make you feel good knowing how close it is. Just a few steps to get over the hump overall from that full four quarters that you know is capable and is out there. Yeah, and we're establishing an identity, and you can see the, the, the core values that, that lives within this program. And, you know, establishing that foundation, you know, there was it, it took time. And, you know, we had to go through some some tough moments, and we had to go through some, some you know, challenging you know, experiences there early through the process. And But our guys, they just, like I said, they continue to work. And whenever it becomes, you know, our values, our standard, not just what a coach is saying, but you see that being lived out by players on a daily basis 
business and, you know, that leadership emerging. I mean, that's, that's what's been, been remarkable about it. You know, last week we talked about, you know, the way Jordan Travis approached the, the bye yeah. week, the way that he approached practice. I mean, it was, you know, you know, there was an unbelievable sense of urgency for improvement. And, you know, he just, he willed us to that. And, you know, it didn't shock me how well he played. Uh, you, he's, he's practiced incredibly throughout this year, but, you know, even taking his level up another notch and, uh, you know, it really just helped elevates everybody around them and uh, you know like I said I mentioned Fabian earlier and just so many players that you know are, are doing all that they can and you really see that in the way that we play as a football team and uh, you know I'm excited about this week ahead because it's another great step for yeah. us. They talk a lot about Jordan Travis today and tonight and rightly so as uh, he was honored today we'll discuss that and tell you about that here this evening and impressive work uh, from number 13 uh, career high in passing yards in that game on Saturday. Tying a career high in completions with 24. A career high in touchdown passes with three overall. Uh, he is our truest hero of the game. The uh, truest, proud to support the local Tallahassee community and Seminole Athletics with the hero of the game. And, and as you mentioned, just the, the urgency that he has with, with the way he wants the season to go and each week to go. He, he's climbing himself and taking things to a whole other level. And, and, you know, he knows that, you know, all that we can control is today and, and what we do with this day and this opportunity. And then, you know, Lord willing, we, we wake up tomorrow, we get to go get better. And that's, that's just, you know, he, we're, we're not wasting rep reps. We're not wasting days. We're not wasting opportunities. And, and when you have the, your best players that, that take that approach and, and have that mindset, you know, it really does, you know, carry over, you know, throughout the rest of the football team. And, and I think that he's been a great example of that. And, you know, it's just it's fun seeing so many of our guys that that are that are buying into that and you know that doesn't you know, I say I say to our team all the time and and you know hard work doesn't guarantee success but it does put you in the best in the best position to achieve it and you know we saw a, a great bounce back from some from very challenging moments over the last three weeks you know going into this this last game against Georgia Tech and I mean you saw a team that was hungry to go you know put on display what they were capable of and you know I thought we were dominant through the majority of that game and yeah. uh, you know I was just proud of our football team and when you start with carry you get a different kind of bank truest the official retail bank of the florida state seminoles couple of honors today for jordan travis named the davy o'brien awards great eight of top performances this past weekend and one of eight stars of the week by the manning award as well a career best 396 yards passing you led your offense coach to 642 yards of total offense that's the most by any team in the fbs last week the best offensive showing overall no, I mean, and the players did a great job, and, uh, you know, they – uh, they were able to execute the plan. You know, they went and uh, you know they put in the work to be able to, to to get it accomplished. And that was you know that was a good defense that we played against. Yeah. And you know, you look, I think they'd only given up uh, you know, over 415 yards two times this season. And yeah. I mean they had they had really done a nice job and had played well. Um, but you know our guys, you know they they were determined to go out and uh, you know put our best foot forward. And uh, we did that for you know, I would say 95 percent of the game. <laughs> and you know even even with you know that great performance, there were still some plays that we left out there. And that's what that's what our guys you know they know. That, that we have we have more in us and uh, you know we got another great challenge ahead this week and uh, you know they're looking forward to the competition yep Knowles with that W and dominant effort Saturday 41 to 16 over Georgia Tech now getting ready for the Miami Hurricane Saturday night Hard Rock Stadium that's a 7 30 p.m. Eastern kick I don't have to say I'm up to say Miami and everybody goes okay we, we get we understand we, we got what we got what's going on here this week. Just getting rolling here on a Monday night. Happy Halloween, everybody. Live from Cushies in College Town here with the head coach, Mike Norvell, talking all things Florida State football. And come enjoy good food, good folks, and good times at Cushies Bayou Rouge. Cushies offers authentic South Louisiana cuisine and some of the best burgers and wings in town. Coming out to Cushies in College Town, the home of Inside Seminole Football. Have a great show for you here on Monday night with great guests. Akeem Dent will stop by the program and one of the all-time great wide receivers and wide receiver coach for Mike Norvell. Ron Dugan's on the show tonight as well. More to come. Stay with us again. Live from Cushies in College Town, you're listening on ABC 27 and uh, watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network. Again, Jeff Colhane. Back on Monday night, live from Cushies in College Town here on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield here with the head coach, Mike Norvell, Florida State. Another outstanding performance by Coach's squad, a 
to 16 victory over Georgia Tech. Now getting ready for Miami Saturday night down in Miami Gardens at 7.30 p.m. Eastern kick. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Time now for What's on Tap, brought to you by the official craft beer of the Florida State Seminoles, Oyster City Brewing Company. Check out the tap room on Gain Street, 7.30 on Saturday night. Just announced today, the, uh, they love the Knolls in prime time. Under the lights, ladies and gentlemen, it's an 8 p.m. Eastern kick at Syracuse on the ACC Network, and so we're excited about that as we'll be back on the road next Saturday, September the 12th. And then also with the fall sports moving towards uh, the month of November, you got Florida State soccer as the 2C. Congratulations to Brian Penske, an ACC regular season championship this last weekend. They take on Notre Dame at the ACC championships in Cary, North Carolina at 8 p.m. on Thursday night. And Florida State volleyball takes on Clemson Friday night at Tully Gym, 8 p.m. senior night uh, as well. Uh, we talked about your offense. Uh, I'll tell you, your defense, uh, you mentioned the dominance in the, uh, the first half. And even, uh, you know, with, with some of the things that you come out after the, the, the fumble recovery uh, by Georgia Tech, it just felt like all day they were in, in just hunting mode. Coach, they smelled, they, they sensed the blood in the water, it seemed like, all afternoon long. What really jumped out at you as you flipped on the film about your defense and the way they went about it, how they got after people? And you know, I love this, the speed and physicality of which they played. You know, we're so very impactful. Uh, you know, I, I think there was, you know, I can't remember the exact number, 10, 12, you know, TFLs that were created. You know, guys were, were making plays on, you know, behind the line of scrimmage and just, uh, you know, really uh, disrupt, disrupted a lot of the things that, uh, you know, Georgia Tech was wanting to do. Uh, you know, they hit a couple plays here or there, you know, you know really, uh, you know, uh, you know, opened up a, a variety of different things, you know, schematically they were trying to do but you know I thought our aggressiveness defensively uh, really showed up big and you know it was, it was some great individual performances but and I you know one guy I do want to point out and I'm just so proud of is Leonard Warner yeah. uh, you, you look at you know Leonard and how he played and this is a young man that you know his college career you know started off at linebacker you know played a lot of football there you know we we uh, you know, talked about moving down to the defensive end position because we felt like that would be a great fit uh, with his athleticism, things he could do, you know, his physicality and toughness. And, and then, unfortunately, he got hurt, and he missed, it, you know, missed a year. Uh, but to be able to come back this year and you know, the, such, the meaningful snaps that he has made and the plays that, 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 he's, that he's making, you see his confidence growing and just so proud of him and what he was able to do in that game. Yep, holding Georgia Tech to 264 yards of total offense in that contest, 10 TFLs, that's a season high for your defense. Four sacks tying a season high as well. And he talked about Leonard Warner the third, a career high one and a half sacks in that game. You had, you had Leonard, you have Tatum Bethune flying around making plays. Jared Verse, of course, was chucking people around uh, along the edge for you as well. I tell you, I, I know we talk a lot about Jamie Robinson and the way he, he gets to the ball. Saw him in the second half. You guys were using him a lot off the edge to provide some, some different looks and pressure to try and get into the backfield and disrupt Zach Pyra on the true freshman quarterback. Yeah, and that's, and that's something that Jamie shows his, his versatility. You know, what, nobody can do it in the, in the back end in coverage, but, to, you know, to, he's really done a great job of that this year of being a force player and being able to come in and, you know, some of the different, uh, you, know, you know, pressure packages that, that we've uh, been able to, to use him on has, has been, you know, very impactful and, you know, I'm proud of Jamie and his continued growth of, of what he's been able to do. And, you know, you mentioned those guys. You know, I, I know I talked earlier in the press conference about our linebacking unit and, yeah. you know, really the way that they played. I thought those guys really played at a high level. And, you know, and, you know, obviously, you know, linebackers are going to are going to play good when you have, you know, good play up front. And, uh, you know, being able to get Fabian back, you know, Jared, uh, you know, those guys, you know, Robert Cooper. I mean, you know, our defensive front was was uh, you know, definitely you know, making a great impact and letting those linebackers, you know, fly sideline to sideline and, uh, you know, really, really helped establish that uh, uh, you know that line of scrimmage and uh, you know, I thought those guys did a really nice job for you each know, other uh, you come into the year and and you, you, you're, you're you got Jared and you're looking to replace um, you know Jermaine Johnson Kier Thomas and all of a sudden here we are it's October 31st getting ready for Miami week and you got 9 10 11 guys deep along the defensive line and you knew you had some of those bodies but it feels like everybody with that unit with their opportunity has stepped up their play excelled and as we've discussed, obviously the young guys have been able to come through and, and, and take advantage of those reps. But all, all of the experiences of that group this year feels like 
it's brought this unit to an entirely another level as well overall. Yeah, and I think it's a compliment to the young men, you know, the new the newcomers that have joined the program, but also the development of the guys that have been here. Derek McClendon, you know, Patrick Payton, you who's, who's come on and really uh, really emerged. You know, Josh Farmer. Yeah. I mean, Malcolm Ray, guys that uh, you know have have grown up through the program, and now now they put themselves in a position to make a great impact. Uh, you know, it's it, that's that's what brings joy to my heart. Mm. You know, because you see you see the process. You know, yes, getting in a, a, a Jared Verse, a you know, Tatum. Those those guys coming in, I mean, it's been it's been remarkable what they've been able to add to the room and and you know just the impact they've been able to make. But it's it's a it's a great mesh and you know our guys we're playing at a high level and uh, you know there's like I said you know just like we said on offense the same thing goes on defense. There's still things that we can you know clean up and we need to clean up. But I mean you see you see those guys really you know, merging together and uh, you know I believe the best is is ahead of this group. Yep, held Georgia Tech to just two of thirteen on third down conversions. I know you preach this a lot. A lot of that starts on first down, right, where you have to start it off right. And you, if you're, uh, you know, especially with that first half, thinking about where some of these drives for Georgia Tech started, I remember, uh, I believe it was after uh, an LT, the, the Lawrence fumble uh, around the 33-yard line, all of a sudden three plays later you look up and Georgia Tech's back 23 yards behind where the drive began. I mean, that's just a, a killer mentally for a football team that didn't have a lot of life coming in offensively before the game started. Yeah, and I mean, that's where you, you, you want your playmakers to show up in those moments and being able to have the, the TFLs, the quarterback sacks, you know, being able to create that pressure is, is something that's big. And you, if you can get a team to have to be behind the behind the sticks, you know, the, obviously they understand uh, you know, that it becomes a lot more a one-dimensional, you know, focus for them. And it really allow, allowed our guys to uh, to tee off. And, uh, you know, I thought that, that our guys in the defensive backfield really did work and challenge a, you know, a big – a big group of receivers, and, uh, you know, I was, I was proud of what a lot of things that uh, the entire unit did and just the way that they played. Yep. Fabian Lovett, you mentioned him, gets back out there, uh, get, some, get some reps, get some plays in. Uh, I saw him at times. You had him lined up a little bit along the edge outside. You're moving guys around, too, as well, showing off the versatility of that unit. But Fabian, overall, you mentioned and you talked so much about his impact as a leader the presence that he has is just, I mean, it's, it's, it's big time, isn't it, for your group when you see him out there? Absolutely. And then you, and then you see the way that he plays. And, I mean, you know, he was uh – you know that he was so impactful in being able to clog up some of those the, some of those interior gaps, and you know with him and and Coop. I mean the way that those guys have played throughout their career, and and it, it really was was great to see that that energy and those guys having fun together. And it was uh, you know it's what we want. And it, I know it's been a challenge this year. You know we've had a lot of guys that have gone down, and uh, you know it has oper opened up opportunities for some of those guys we mentioned earlier to to grow and develop through that experience. But it, you know it's great to to be coming together and uh, you know getting health healthy in this type of time of the year. Yep, some award winners as well coming out of the Georgia Tech game for Florida State football. We'll talk about those young men on the other side when we come back as we're live from Cushes here in College Town on Monday night, Miami week upon us for Mike Norvell and his Florida State football team. And Florida State Athletics would like to thank Florida Farm Bureau Insurance for their support of Seminole football. Stay with us. More to come here on a Monday night talking all things Florida State football as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, I uh, having some fun with our closest friends here talking to all things Florida State football on Monday night, live from Cooches in College Town. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football as Florida State moves to 5-3 and three on the season with their 41-16 performance and win over Georgia Tech and now getting ready for the Miami Hurricanes Saturday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern kick at Hard Rock Stadium down in Miami Gardens. How about we lead things off with our uh, Tijuana Flats queso question. Hard hitting here, Coach with the Halloween holiday tonight. Jared in Jacksonville wanted to know, Coach, what are your top three Halloween candies overall? Do you have a list? I know, are you, you're probably not a big candy guy. You're in uh, great shape, you know. You take, uh, you take care Reese, of it. Uh, I will say Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. There's a win, yep, yep. There's a response. And, and the rest of it. That's I just, it. I just roll. I don't know. I'm not a big, not a, not a big candy yeah, guy. Yeah, so. I, I figured. I figured not. So Reese, there you go. Oh, Smarties. You know, those Smarties, little, yeah, those yeah, are good. Those yeah. Are good. Not, you know, Starburst, not star, like none of the fruit candies or anything? No? All right, there you go. I find myself with our, our gals from the Extra Point Club who are here tonight doing a great, great, they're always with us. I've noticed that my candy intake 
at the Moore Center has probably quadrupled <laughs> since coming to Tallahassee <laughs> with the, the baskets that are out front. So yeah. thank you, ladies. Uh, appreciate that. <laughs> that is always uh, very nice. So our Tijuana Flats queso question, Halloween version, the hard-hitting stuff here on Inside Seminole Football. All right, Coach, uh, award winners here this week, and uh, your team recognized. I thought it was really cool, uh, the, uh, the first tweet by Trey Benson as he was announced today as the ACC running back of the week. Trey Benson, a career high, 111 yards, and a 10-yard reception as well in his first collegiate start. His first tweet, giving love to the offensive line. Right off the bat. Uh, and, 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 you know, Trey is just a, a remarkable young man. And, uh, you know, I mean, it does not shock me that, uh, you know, he, he's, he, he is always, he's always looking to, to make those around him better. And he's done a great job coming into this program. And, uh, you know, just his, his appreciation for opportunity and his appreciation for, uh, for those guys up front and, uh, you know, everybody that, that helps to impact, uh, you know, the job that he does. I mean, he's just uh, an incredible spirit. And, uh, you know, he did, a, he did a wonderful job running the ball the other night. You know, him and LT, I mean, to, to – yeah. You know, that combination was, was remarkable. Had some of our young backs that were able to yes. get in there. Uh, you know, it was great seeing Rodney Hill hit a, a couple more runs. And then, you know, what an incredible story with C.J. Campbell, yes. you know, getting the ball in the end zone. Uh, you thought C.J. Would, would be out possibly for the entire year and uh, be able to get back and score his first, t- you know, his first touchdown here as a Seminole and just seeing the reaction from our team uh, you're there on the sideline. I mean, that's what, that's what makes this team, you know, really uh, a remarkable group. And, uh, you, know, you know, Trey is a great example of that. And uh, you're just proud of him. Talk about this in the post game with you a little bit on CJ, but uh, you laid it out. Thought you might have lost him for the year back in fall camp. What's it mean to you as a coach to see a young man go through what he went through and, and, and never quit? Keep fighting. He was always around us. You see him at practice on the, the scooter with his leg up and dressed in, in his practice uniform when he's not a part of, of anything from practice related, right? And um, just fighting and getting you know, back out there here in late October. You know, the mind is an incredible thing. And, uh, you know, when, how you approach adversity and really what, what you're willing to, to, to allow to come into your mind and, and the way that you can, can work and try to overcome, you know, even the, the most challenging of situations. And, you know, I remember the night that, you know, that uh, you know, CJ got hurt, and it was an emotional night. I mean, I hurt for him. It was just, it was, it was something that you see somebody works, you know, so hard to put themselves in a position to make an impact. And then, you know, for that to be delayed, but, but, you know, from, you know, the moment that it happened till, you know, throughout the process, it was like, Coach, I'm going to come, I'm going to be back, I'm going to be back better, faster than they think I can. I'm going I'm to continue to work. And it was always with a smile on his face and, and, you know, just that impact and still being able to pour into his teammates and, you saw the you saw the result of that in the celebration with our team because he made he made an impact when he wasn't even able to step on the field and then when he did you saw the impact uh, that our team had for him in the celebration yeah. of that touchdown and uh, like I said that's what that's what I love about this group. Yep. Also want to of course make mention Dimitri Emmanuel named the uh, the offensive lineman of the week in the ACC here after his performance against Georgia Tech he played 80 snaps against the Yellow Jackets did not allow a quarterback pressure and helping lead that Florida State offense to 642 yards of total offense against Georgia Tech. Uh, talk to people about Dimitri and, and, and his, um, his path to Florida State and how he has been able to ingrain himself along your offensive line and as a part of your football team. Yeah, you know, he's, he's played a lot of football. You know, he came from, from Charlotte where, uh, you know, he was a, a three-year starter and really, uh, um, you know, was a part of, of – of that first year was with Coach Atkins, and yeah. uh, so they had had a prior relationship. And you know, when he decided to go into the portal, it was somebody that you know, you know we had uh, we had a need, and you know, we thought that he would bring great value to be able to uh, to come and be a part of the program. You know, he went through the process and the journey of evaluating all of his options, and he had some great ones that were were out there. But you know, this was the best fit, and you know, his work ethic, uh, you know, his intelligence, you know, the the way that he plays the game, um, you know, really really excited and, and proud of him for what he's done as he's transitioned up, uh, you know, in, in competition and the way that he's performed. Benson and Emmanuel, Florida State's sixth and seventh ACC Player of the Week recognitions this season. Congratulations to those two uh, young men. I want to ask you about uh, two big plays uh, before we had to break and start uh, talking about Miami. 78-yard uh, touchdown from Jordan Travis to Johnny Wilson, the longest offensive play of the year for your football team. Uh, wow, there's a lot of excitement in that play. Great throw, amazing catch, and an unbelievable finish by Johnny 
taking that one the rest of the way. No, it was. And, I mean, I, I thought that, you know, Johnny did a great job in, in getting a release off the line of scrimmage. I mean, that was a, it was a talented group of corners. And those guys, you know, they hadn't given up a whole lot of plays this year. Uh, but we wanted to we wanted to attack. We wanted to be aggressive. And uh, we felt confident in our guys. And, you know, Johnny got a great release. And Jordan just threw a perfect ball to him. And then, uh, you know, once Johnny got the ball in his hands, he made the safety miss. And the, and the rest was history. You know, did a great job finishing in the end zone. And it was a huge play in the game. And then Lawrence Tofili, kind of that, that wheel route up the, the far sideline and we know uh, LT can make some pretty special plays out in the open field uh, that was a, a fun one to watch to say the least from our vantage point no, from my vantage point too I'm I, sure I was. enjoyed that <laughs> and uh, you know it was a play that we talked about that if, if it if we got a certain look or a certain coverage that um, you know we, we wanted to be aggressive and uh, we got you know, LT matched up versus the defensive end and a versus a pressure and um, you know we were able to uh, I thought Jordan did a remarkable job of being patient and letting the play develop and then just threw a wonderful ball down the uh, uh, down the, the, to the open field, and uh, you know, Lawrence did a great job of finishing the play. Once again, making a safety miss and uh, getting the ball in the end zone. And what I love you know, most about it is it was a response. You know, we just had a. Uh, a, a offensive pass was, interference uh, penalty called against us yep. uh, and and really it was the next play for Lawrence yeah. after he had just turned the ball over and you know you talk about how you respond and where do you go from that moment he did not let one bad play affect the next one he went and made a game changing play with his next opportunity and I was really proud of him for that yep big plays by this Florida State offense they lead the ACC and rank second nationally with 62 plays of 20-plus yards this season. Two of those right there, 78 and 62 yards. Jordan Travis to Johnny Wilson and Jordan Travis to Lawrence Tofili. We'll take a timeout. It is Miami week, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk with Coach about the matchup and about the week leading up to a, a big-time game that means so much to so many around the state of Florida. Hey, did you know that reading one text while driving takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds at 55 miles per hour? That's like driving the length of a football field with your eyes closed. Put your phone down and set aside all distractions. Don't drive distracted. Arrive alive. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. More to come live from Cushes in College Town as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. All right, we're fired up and excited for the opponent coming up this weekend, the Miami Hurricanes, and looking forward to Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida State, and Miami. Before we talk about uh, the matchup with Coach, how about a Chick-fil-A stat nugget from this game this past week as Jordan Travis threw for 396 yards, Johnny Wilson with 111 receiving yards, and Trey Benson rushed for 111 yards that's just the third time in program history Florida State has had a 375-yard passer, 100-yard rusher, and 100-yard receiver, ladies and gentlemen, in the same game, huh? How about that for a Chick-fil-A stat nugget right there? Just the third time overall. There you go, making history, making it happen, huh? Um, I mean, once again, you know, guys... Uh did a great job, and uh, you know we got to continue to to, to build upon that. Uh, you know, as we jump into this week, uh, you know, great, uh, just what what a great week for yeah. college football. I mean, to to be able to get to, to this game, I mean, it's it means so much to to our program, to, to our university, to all of our, our incredible fan base. Uh, you excited about uh, you know you know getting to this week because it's one we talk about for, you know, you know year round, and uh, excited to prepare for it. Yeah, I, I like. Uh, you know, just how you talk about it, right? Because it's a big deal. I mean, it's some people would, you know, maybe not talk about what it is. I mean, this this is such a, an important game to so many people, right, across the board. And it's what I know you talked about that you guys discuss one or two at the beginning of each season with all your guys. Yeah, if you don't talk about it, it's because you've never been a part of it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a special game. And it's, uh, you know, the energy, this, the, all the things that go, go around it. I mean, it's, it's what – what is what makes college football great and this rivalry all the all the great teams that that have that have been able to be a part of it in the past you know i've got uh, you know five guys on our staff that have that have played in this game and when you and and four of them for florida state and one of them you know, with coach shannon yeah. you know down to, uh, down in miami and uh, you know to, to hear their perspective and just you know the, the, the all that has gone into it and to know that you know come saturday night we get our opportunity and that's one of the things i've talked to this football team is you get to leave your legacy for this year this 
team, you know, for the next 365 days, you know, people are going to talk about what happens, you know, come Saturday night. And for a lifetime, you get to remember that. And yeah. uh, so it's so important in, in how we prepare. But it's not just about this week. It's everything that we've done throughout the course of the season to prepare ourselves to go be our best with this opportunity. Yeah. And you talk about how it, how it affects so many people, recruiting a, a big deal in so many ways. Um, and, and as you talked about the, today in your press conference, reflecting on how far you, you've come in two years, where two years ago with, with COVID, you weren't able to be there in that game. You mentioned it was one of the hardest days of your life overall. And I can tell that, that you're ex extremely excited to get down there, to have the opportunity to coach in this game on the road uh, down in Miami Gardens. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh it's one of those, you know, one of those just, you know, great moments that you look forward to. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, to be able to, to have the game at home last year, to do the things that were necessary to win that game, and now to have to go on the road, um, you know, it's going to be a great challenge. And, uh, you know, our, our guys, they, they embrace challenges. Yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Our time now for our Scott and Wallace keys to success. Scott and Wallace, the official law firm of the Florida State Seminoles. Coach, last week uh, you didn't know who the opponent's starting quarterback was. You had a dominant defensive effort. This week, I guess, kind of a similar situation. Tyler Van Dyke's their guy, banged up during Duke. Uh, you know, you, you could see two or three guys again. What are those keys uh, it, to success and preparation by your defensive unit when sometimes there's a certain level of uncertainty when, with what you're facing on the opposite side? Well, it, it still comes back to us. It comes back to our communication, you know, you know our, our details, our fundamentals, uh, you know, the pursuit and passion of, of, what, we're, of what we play. And, uh, you know, obviously we're going to have a game plan that's going to be specific, you know, for, for Miami. And, you know, we could see a variety of different guys. You know, we're anticipating that, that uh, Van Dyke will be back and, you know, we'll be able to, to you know, uh, adjust with anything else that happens. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's what makes college football great is there's, it's, it's always changing, always evolving, and uh, you've got to be your best in the moment, and that's, that's what we've got to, we've got to push and, and pursue to be. Yep, Scott Wallace, 222-7777 with offices in Tallahassee, the official law firm of the Florida State Seminoles. Final thoughts before I let you go? Uh, emotional week, big week, big opportunity. Yeah, and, and for us, it's it's about maintaining that focus, that intensity, but, uh, you know, being able to show the maturity that we've had and, you know, to take the, the previous eight weeks and eight games, you know, when you reflect on the good things, you, you obviously reflect on the things that, that weren't up to the standard of, of, of what we want, and you got to go get better. And, you know, I think our team has, has really you know, grown up a lot. And, you know, when you get in an emotional game and, and where there's going to be a lot of momentum swings and you're going to feel all of that, you got to stay true to who you are. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big week for uh, for our team, and I know they're going to prepare at a high level, and you're looking forward to seeing them compete come Saturday night. Coach, always great to see you. Thanks so much for the time, and best of luck getting ready this week. Thanks so much, and appreciate everybody coming out. And go go Knowles. There we go. As the head coach, Mike Norvell, we appreciate his time here on a Monday evening. As our show brought to you in part by Tijuana Flats, they want to give Knowles fans a free taco and chips every Friday this football season. Just wear your Knowles gear into your local Tijuana Flats and mention the Knowles Fridays promo to get your free taco and chips. It's that easy. So grab your Knowles gear and head to Tijuana Flats home of Knowles Fridays. Coming up, one of the stars of this Florida State defense, Pahokee native Akeem Dent stops by our main table. That's on the way as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Back live from Coaches in College Town. My name is Jeff Colhane. Miami Week, Florida State in Miami. You know who our next guest is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give a big round of applause. Starting safety, Pahokee native, McKean Dent with us. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How you doing, yourself? I'm doing very, very well. You started all eight games this season, ranking fourth amongst the Seminoles in total tackles overall. Four pass breakups. This guy, by the way, leads all Florida State defenders with 15 career pass breakups during his time at FSU, flying around making it happen. Thanks you guys giving out that stat. Yeah, that, 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 yes, we're gonna, that, that's going to grow. I know too. Yeah. In the next four or five games, right? Hey, uh, you guys are playing very, very well. Kind of walk me through the confidence level this group is playing with right now. You guys look like you were uh, you were sensing blood in the water all day on Saturday with Georgia Tech. Yeah, that game came down to you know horn in, keeping the um, small thing to small thing. You know, getting off the field third down. You know, we're just trying to capitalize on how we came off the last game. So I feel like we did a pretty good you job. You definitely did a good job, Akeem. Two of 13. You got the field. You held the two of 13 on third down conversions in that game. Extremely impressive overall. 
Talk to Coach about this, and I wanted to ask you, you've had a, probably four or five times this season where you guys leading up to a game, you have to prepare maybe for a couple quarterbacks, mm -hmm. not just one guy. What's that like? What's that like during the week getting ready for that kind of situation? I mean, it ain't a struggle, but it's a struggle. We, <laughs> we feel good with the coaches. They do a good job yeah. with though, having that thing, the clips, and having all the mechanics and stuff. So we be a little good. We lead that to the coaches. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on there. there. There's no doubt. I don't know if I've seen a team that's had to deal with that as much as you guys have uh, here this season. Um, hey, you know, your, your safety uh, uh, room, you and Jamie Robinson, that's one of the best duos in the entire ACC overall. What's that communication level like, that confidence level? How do you guys feed off of one another when you're out there on the field together at the same time? Oh, we feed good because, you know, we know that we got to start fast. You know, we the back end, so we got to put the um, fire out if it do a fire. So we be good. The communication be great. Really with the whole team, everybody communicate good, good chemistry, everybody together as one. Yep, Akeem, how great was it to get Fabian Lovett back in the, on the defensive line last week? Yeah, it felt good. Seeing my boy celebrate, seeing him showing <laughs> how he missed out there. I'm proud of my boy. Appreciate his comeback. Yeah, there was a lot of people happy to see uh, number zero there number in the zero. middle of that uh, defensive line. There's no question about that. I say Miami week as a Florida native, as a, as a Florida young man. What comes to mind right away with the opportunity this week? Uh, being from down south, yeah, big game. You know, this is a game where Coach Novell was saying they're going to be talked about for the rest of your life. So being from down there, it's a big opportunity for me to be able to go home and, you know, throw my weight around coming out this win. Bragging rights, right, Bragging for the next rights. 365 days? Right. There you go. Saying. There you go. What's the rest of this week like, getting ready? It feels like you guys are so locked in and ingrained with each day during practice. What are some of the things you, you look forward to over the next three days, getting ready for, uh, for heading down to Miami Gardens? You know, we, we come in, me personally, looking for a good, you know, good practices, great practice. You know, this is a good week. We need everything to be, you know, smooth, going great. So, just horn in, everybody um, paying attention to their keys and assignments. So just well, in. We, we know you are doing that. You're definitely paying attention to the keys and assignments, that's for sure, with right. the way you've been playing out there in your redshirt junior season. A king dent, everyone, here on the main table with us. Pleasure, as always. Thank great you. talking to you. Keep up the great work on the field. That's, there you go. That's a king dent, ladies and gentlemen, with us here on our main table. Hey, get free local news and weather 24-7. Just search WTXL on your favorite streaming device and to watch local news and weather on your time. Wide receivers coach Ron Dugans joins us next here at our main table as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening to Inside Seminole Football on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Back live, our final few segments here live from Cushes in College Town. It is inside Seminole football as Florida State getting ready for Miami. And our show brought to you in part by T-Spark Enterprises. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks at tsparkconstruction.com. Hey, big round of applause. You know who this guy is as well. Ron Dugans is here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. A guy that's played in some big-time games, national champion, and wide receivers coach here at Florida State University. Great to see you, Coach, as always. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks so much for coming down. I say Miami week. Mm. What comes to mind? Everything. Yeah. Uh, hard work. Yeah. You know, great competition. You know, focus. You know, just being resilient. Domination. Domination. Somebody said domination. <laughs> I, I there you I go. That. Domination. Exactly <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, it, it goes, it's so, it's so amazing to hear people like yourself that have, that have lived these battles yeah. and talk about when, when you think back upon the memories as a player and the, and the memories as a coach, the opportunity to leave a legacy mm -hmm. this upcoming weekend is, is something special to say the least. Yeah, it is, and, and that's why you come to a place like Florida State to play in these big time games like this. You know, I was just telling one of my players, like on both sides of the ball, you got a lot of NFL guys. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we used to call it money games. Uh huh. You know, when I was a player, and uh, but we we knew that the most disciplined team, um, you know, the team that can run the football, um, the, t the team that played as a team, you know, were, were normally the teams that came out successful in this type of football game. You know, but um, been looking forward to it all season. Uh -huh. You know, trying not to, not you know, overlook somebody else. 
Um, but this is the one, you know, that you, you come to Florida State for. Yep. I have a lot I want, to, I want to talk to you about. we got to hit a, hit a quick break here, but we're going to talk about your wide receivers and obviously uh, the big plays made and, and the blocking mentality your group has, certainly, as well as Ron Dugan's with us here, ladies and gentlemen, here at our main table, live from Cush. He's in College Town, in town for a game this fall. They have four points by Sheridan, Tallahassee, downtown, located in an iconic round building across from the Florida State University campus. Parking always complimentary, plus free shuttle service to the airport and Doe Campbell Stadium. Make your hotel reservations at Four Points by Sheridan, Ta Tallahassee, downtown today. More with Ron Dugans when we return as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Final time here live from Cushies in College Town inside Seminole football. And if you love the Knowles and want to help your teams win, join the Seminole Boosters for only $5 per month at SeminoleBoosters.com. Membership provides great benefits, including insights into the program, invitations to events, ticket priority for home and away games, and more. Learn more online at SeminoleBoosters.com. Here with wide receivers coach Ron Dugans, it is Miami week. And you talk about big-time players making big-time plays in big-time games. You were a part of that as a player. Your guys now are doing that under your tutelage as a coach. What are you liking the most about your wide receiver room right now, Coach? Uh, the biggest thing that I like about the guys, um, they're being selfless. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the message coming in uh, from training camp, you know, leading up to the season, that it's only one ball. You know, and I know just playing a receiver position, everybody's going to want the ball. Yeah. You know, but just seeing those guys, the way they go out and they practice hard every day, you know, and competing and being happy and encouraging the teammates. Um, some of the, like the, 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 the little things, you know, but that they make a big difference. Yeah. You know, and they, when they make plays on Saturdays, man, you just see them encouraging each other, getting excited for each other. Yeah. You know, and that's what really stood out for me. Yeah. People watch you play the game. They, they watch your physicality. One of the great blockers that is a wide receiver here at Florida State University. How is that mentality from yourself? Because we see it in your guys. Mm -hmm. How have you instilled that with that room? Because they've really attached to that this season and, and seasons before under you as well. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I hate is that when people call receivers prima donnas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he plays receiver. Well, we can be physical too. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, we got a saying here, if you don't block, you don't play. Yeah. You know, and I, we take that serious. And I make sure my guys understand that Travis is back there standing in the pocket trying to deliver the ball for you guys. The O-line is protecting. The running backs are protecting, blocking defensive ends, lines back, linebackers for you guys. You know, and that's return the favor. Yeah. You know, when that ball gets to the second and third level, you know, we got to strain through Echo to Wilson. So it's very important that we block on the perimeter for those guys. Yep. You, you see Miami on film. Their, their defense just put together a solid effort in that four-overtime win this past weekend. But what do you see that jumps out at you that challenges this group coming up this weekend? A team that gives great effort. You know, no matter, no matter the, the, you know, what your, your schedule is or no matter what your record is, mm -hmm. you know, on both sides of the ball, we know what this game means. Yeah. You know, and those guys, you know, they play with, you know, resiliency and they play with great effort, um, attitude, you know, they, they fly to the ball, you know, so it's, it's going to be a challenge, but, you know, we'll be ready for it. What are, you, what are you most excited about in practice this week from your group to, to see them go out and get locked in? Well, just, just the focus and yeah. the mindset, you know, to come out, it'll be a Tuesday practice, our Tuesday, Wednesday practice, everybody can't make a Tuesday, Wednesday practice because uh -huh. it's tough and challenging, you know, but just to those guys that come out and just be focused and locked in and play one t uh, game at a time. I mean, I want to play one play at a time. Yep. And, uh, and just to execute. Yep. Coach, can't wait. Can't wait to see your group go out there and uh, compete and perform. It's been fun watching them all season long. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I'd like to say hello to my dad, Lord Griffin, who came out to support me. There season. we go. Very nice, sir. There we go. Coach Dugans, thanks so much. Thank you. That's going to do it for us yes, here. Sir. It's Miami week. We'll see you.